Hello and welcome to Kitty Nero Diaries on the 18th of uh, April. It's a lovely sunny day as you can probably see streaming in through the window there. Look like the moon. Okay, so anyway, uh, thanks for subscribing. We've got a few new subscribers, actually reached 800 now. And obviously when I set this channel up six years ago, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't tick all the right boxes to... Uh, make it any commercial benefit to me and that wasn't my intention I, I got no interest in doing that it's just to share the long-term ownership experience of an electric vehicle uh, specifically the Kia e-Nero so anyway five weeks ago we had a smart meter installed um, we had an old electromechanical meter that according to its commissioning date dates back to 1961 would you believe and this thing used to run backwards during the day when the sun was shining on my solar panels and I didn't really worry about when I plugged the car in because I could just leave it overnight and I knew the next day I'd get a little bit back when the sun started shining on the panels now the what this has meant is that the way we charge the car has changed in the last five weeks and when the sun is shining which you know it gets to a point around noon when it, um, the eight panels on the barn roof east west and the three on the back wall are kind of working together and give me about at least a kilowatt now the car uh, charges on a granny cable i've never bothered getting a, a proper car charger i plan to do that one of these days but you know we're retired folks you know we live at home we nip out during the day so you know, it's no problem to just unplug and plug back in again. I, I keep the cable just in in the in the hangar there where the car lives, and uh, you know, uh, it's just that instead of letting the car go down to like twenty five percent, thirty percent, and plugging in once a week, and, and sort of charging across that sort of width of range, if you like, um, what are we doing now? Is oh, the sun's shining, let's plug in, and we get three or four percent, and we get another five percent and we're keeping it topped up and I mean now that the meter doesn't run backwards that I make the best use of the power that I get um, now when we get the new panels up obviously all together we'll be producing even on a pretty dull day more than 2.2 kilowatts so the the car is the place I want the power to go um, obviously we've got a washing machine and a dishwasher and we cook and there's fridges and freezers um, so dishwashing and uh, you know we don't use it every day but dishwasher washing machine um, we put that on during the day so that again we're using making the best use of the solar that we can so that's the change that's occurred in the last few weeks it's, it was a bit sad to see the old uh, meter going but you know we live in the rural backwards here and uh, I think we're one of the last places certainly in this department of France to get um, the they call them linky um, meters smart meters so um, yeah I guess my bills are going to go up a bit because I won't be pushing that meter backwards on these sunny days that are to come I mean we're in April now and the uh, you know, through May, June, July, August, I've typically been producing, you know, 300 to 400 kilowatt hours a month. Um, and it's good to put that in the car when you can. Next step, obviously, would be batteries so that I can store some during the day and then uh, power the house through the evening. Um, but at the moment, the prices are still pretty high. They're supposed to be coming down with the advent of firstly LFP and eventually sodium ion batteries, which are supposed to be cheaper. Um, been quoted 4,300 euros for seven kilowatt hours, which is cheaper than it was about 18 months ago. But I think in terms of the amount of energy you're storing and making use of, you're still talking about a 20-year payback on £4,300 invest, uh, euros invested in batteries. And I think it needs to be about half of that. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And of course, the other thing is, were I ever to get another car, more and more cars now are coming with vehicle to load, which means that the onboard charges are bi-directional. But just to 
power your home from that massive battery in your car out there it just makes so much sense to me but you need uh, the bi-directional charger on board the car you need the right software which Kia with the EV3 say they will have later this year uh, Renault, Renault 5 has it but the other Renault products don't have it yet and then you need a bi-directional car charger and they are more expensive than a regular car charger so yeah maybe one day but uh, that's not an immediate thing i also wanted to say about some of the comments i get on the on the on, on the previous video they've all been very positive it was just a you know a, a couple of days where i i had to do quite a bit of driving and i thought it was interesting to look at the um, efficiency and um yeah occasionally you do get the you know the naysayers so i i had somebody come in who said inverterly Every aspect, ICE vehicles are superior, and don't forget, EVs have virtually zero retail value, says Mr. Brad Smith, and his picture is of a, a vintage car. And I've looked at him, and he seems to be very into old Jaguars, and you go, okay, you clearly have a, an interest there, and that's fine. Um, and, you know, I just said to him, look, um, you know, it's an interesting opinion, I welcome all comments but um you know i'm just telling my experience i i owned ice vehicles for 45 years and i've owned an ev for six years and my experience along with growing millions of others shows that evs are the superior technology so you know i said if you've got something that can really contribute to the conversation and i'm quite happy to to hear a counter argument uh, then please do say but of course you know he doesn't come back and you know, some people say oh, it's just an oil industry bot or, you know, just a bot or something like that. But I don't think so. I don't think uh, any uh, oil company or anyone with an agenda would bother to look at my little channel with it, with the 800 subscribers I've got and the views I get. But anyway, it's just interesting that there are the sort of um, EV bashers out there. Uh, I won't use the word haters. I think it's just, it's just not relevant and it's just... You know, you don't hate a car, you don't love a car. I mean, I don't, it's just a car, right? Um, but anyway, so that's the kind of thing that sometimes crops up. And uh, I'm quite happy if uh, Mr. Brad Smith wants to come back to tell me why ICE is better and give me evidence, by the way, he says EV sales have been falling, um, that EV sales are in fact falling when, of course, all the evidence is to the contrary. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Until the next time.